Welcome to the planning board meeting of December 4th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. And Emily, would you be so kind as to read the... I, I will be so kind. Um, do we need to state that this is a joint planning board and select board meeting or will you open it separate? Sure. Okay. We'll open it separate. Yeah. All right. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the, uh, the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. And I will open up the select board meeting at um, 6.33. Okay. Uh, okay, great. All right. So I'm going to open the planning board meeting and take attendance. Uh, Kathy Latroba. Kathy Latroba here. Andrew Leibson. Andrew Leibson here. Emily. Emily Gaylord, Gaylord here. <laughs> Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine here. And Kathy Sylvester on remote. Kathy here. Here. All right, great, thanks. Okay, so um, a few things. We're going to review the minutes from 10 2, 11 1, and 11 6. If everyone, has everyone had a chance to review mm -hmm. them? Yeah. Any additions, any changes? If not, do I hear a motion? Move that we um, accept the minutes as presented. Okay, so that would be 410 11 1, and 11 6. Do I hear a second? Uh, Emily Gaylord, second. All right, all in favor? Rachel Blaine, yes. Denise Mason, yes. Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea Liebson, yes. Kathy Wachowie, yes. Great. Okay, thank you. All right, so what we're going to do is, since we do have two select board members, and we're not going to make them sit through the whole meeting. <laughs> so we are going to um, talk about the candidacy of Satu Zoller for the vac vacant planning board seat. And um, I know that I am thrilled to have Satu. I know I'm on the library building committee with her, and I think she's done a great job. And I'd like to hear from anybody else. Any comments? Any objections? No. I'm just happy that someone has volunteered and that it is a high quality person like Satu. Yes. And yes, that she has a planning background, which is yes. always helpful. <laughs> I think the public policy. Public policy. But from she, UMass. She, yeah. Yeah, she, which is great. Okay, yeah. so Carolyn, I know we've only done this once before. Can, so um, do you guys vote first? No, you nominate who you would want, and then we would um, make a uh, motion to support the nomination if before you choose to, which we mm -hmm. are. Okay. All right. So do I hear the nomination for Satu Zoller? Uh, I, Sandria, yes, I nominate her. Too. Do I hear a second? Emily Gaylord, second. And I uh, would make a motion to support that recommendation um, as well from the select board. Tim, you have to say. I would have make a motion that we appoint Satu Zoller or, or accept the recommendation of the planning board to appoint Satu Zoller to the planning board. Okay, so put it to a vote. So uh, select board. Well, I guess I got to second it then. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. We got to make sure somebody seconds it. Okay. All right. So go ahead with the planning board. Okay. So planning board. So um, Rachel Blaine, aye. Okay. Emily Gaylord, aye. Andrea Leibson, aye. Kathy Trevor, aye. And Denise Mason, aye. Uh, and Kathy Sylvester. Thank you. Sorry, Kathy. Okay. Uh, Tim, how would you, would you vote? Um, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. And Carolyn Ness would be I. So it's clearly unanimous. We are thrilled to have Satu on the planning board. All right. So I will get in touch with Satu. I said after Monday night, as long as she's appointed to be sworn in, and then I will meet with her and you know go over a few things. Give okay. Me. Perfect. Fabulous. All right. And Thanks you, so much, Carolyn. Have you all had a chance to chat to Christopher Dunn? No. Welcome, yes. Christopher Dunn. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah. We just wanted to say as a select board how happy we are to have them joining us on, on planning and economic development capacity. And uh, we're looking forward to you guys doing great things with Christopher. Yes, 
We are too, Christopher. Yeah, likewise. Uh, thanks for having me. I just want to say, if you haven't had a chance to stop by uh, room 113, uh, I'm safely ensconced there now, thanks to Chris and Casey. Uh, so come on by and say hi. Will do. Thank you. All right. So Carolyn and Tim, uh, you know, if you don't want to hang out for an exciting meeting, you're excused. I'll make a motion to adjourn the select board meeting. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll second that one. <laughs> All those in favor? Jim Hill, GI. Carolyn, that's I. Okay. We are adjourned at uh, 637. All right. That right. was Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. See you, Tim. Bye, Tim. Bye. All right. Great. Okay. So next, next order of business would be our old business, and that's Cumberland Farms hearing continuation. So notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public meeting on Monday, November 6, 2023 at 6 p.m. on an application filed by Cumberland Farms, care of Don Johnson for site plan review amendment for property located at 31 Elm Street, map 168, lots 63 and 64, to install electric vehicles vehicle parking spaces, two chargers, one power block, slash concrete pad, gas meter, new transformer, extend the existing six parking space bay along Elm Street to a total of eight spaces, including two EV spaces, two future EV spaces, and four non-EV spaces, and remove the outdoor seating and fence that are approximate to the building, and replace the 306, 370 plus square foot area with 68 grasses, ground cover plantings pursuant to zoning bylaws chapter 179 application. That is a mouthful. Welcome Dan, Don Johnson, <laughs> good to see you. I see Pete's on too. So that's great. Um, let's see. So Don, um, would you like to speak? Okay, I think you're muted though. Oh, sorry. Okay. That's okay. Thank, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to kind of recap. So when we were last, um, and then kind of, kind of give you an update of where we are today. Um, last time we met, uh, most of the focus was a lot of the questions. Um, everyone seemed okay with the EV. Um, a lot of the focus was on the drainage and updating that and getting it back to operating at um, post-construction conditions. Um, on last Thursday, um, I was on, I was met with the CONCOM commission. Um, they've, um, we talked about, they asked what the kind of scope was, um, and they requested that for us to provide to them a plan or plans and details outlining exactly what we plan to do, um, to mitigate the, the basin and then to submit that and they will determine whether it will be an NOI or an RDA based on um, what our scope is and what information we give them. So we are currently working, my engineer is currently working on that now. Um, I'm also trying to coordinate with the GC to pull all the information together to submit that to them um, at this, you know, hopefully in the upcoming weeks. Um, and then I'm also here to ask if it's possible to take a vote to ask for a conditional approval of our plan with the condition that we cannot proceed until we have constructed the basin, it's been inspected and signed off by, um, by the town of Deerfield. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so let's see. So I don't see, do we have anyone? In the audience, nobody's here. <laughs> okay, questions or comments by members of the board. Okay, so so questions first. Just wanted to let you know that that Kathy Watrub and I were able to go and meet Dawn and Henry at the site visit. So we were able to see what was going on. Had a really good discussion. Saw the EV chargers, where the placement of those, and then also saw the overgrown detention pond <clears throat> with the fencing around it. So we were able able to have a good conversation, have a better understanding of what was going on. Um, so, but for other board members that were not able to be present, do you have any questions? No, the concern was just about the maintenance of the retention pond, that um, how did it come to be 
in such bad shape? And how can we be sure that going forward, it will be better maintained? That's this is Andrea Liebson talking. Right. Okay. So we, so when we were on site, we did notice, so it appears that it's a little deceiving. There isn't as much water, though there is still water in there. That's, that's one issue. Um, but we believe that's because of all the leaves and everything just kind of compounded as we discussed last time. So going forward, we are, we are going to actually update the operation and maintenance manual um, to specify exactly what our facilities people need to do um, per quarter. And that way there's no gray area having us to say clean it out or to maintain it. Myself and Phil are gonna work with the maintenance people to put in the specific language so that that language would be given to the landscaper um, so that it can be followed to the letter. We're also going to, um, we're looking at pricing to install, um, as you know, like during construction, like the oxblow cameras that during construction, we're looking to install that over the pond to see, um, hopefully we're looking at pricing right now, if it's not cost prohibitive, to put a shot of the pond, the entire pond, for the duration of the year once, once construction starts and after it's done to see what exactly is happening with the leaves and if it truly is the leaves, which we believe it is on top of everything else, um, if it's the leaves that are causing it and to what rate are they falling and if and also on our end to see if the landscapers are truly cleaning it out when they say they are. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a twofold um, process or checklist really. Um, I'm hoping I can get approval internally to do that. I'm trying to, um, that way it makes the landscapers accountable. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, that is my plan right now as far as the camera. Okay. That's, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. That way you could watch. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That yes. will be exciting, Dawn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does, does anybody else, any of the members have any other additional questions? I also wondered, did uh, CONSCOM, uh, were they happy with the, the results? I, well, I think that that's a, that's a separate thing. The CONSCOM will have to look at um, whether they have a completion completion of compliance and we are doing war is, um site plan review yes on completion which it was never actually signed off on so it's still under construction so it, it gets yes mm -hmm. but the cons come they are working with the cons come as a matter of fact pete's on right now so i don't know yeah. if he wants to you know speak to that at all maybe not i don't know hi denise this is pete yeah I think, yeah, we had a good conversation last week with Don. And, um, you know, one of our concerns would be as they do, you know, uh, work on uh, bringing that uh, sketchy pond back to engineering specs, if there's going to be any uh, removal of water and materials and where did it go? There's a resource area right next door in the wetlands. So that would be, that's why we requested the uh, engineering um, specs so we can see what the plans are. Um, so that we can uh, look at uh, protection of the uh, neighboring resource area. Okay, great. Well, yeah, and, and Pete and I have been in conversation, so I think, you know, everyone's sort of aware of what's going on, which is really good. So um, any questions here, Rachel or Emily? No, I have a quick question. So the landscapers, are they landscapers that are local that understand this topography and, and our, you know, weather system and, and water plains or, or is it a landscaping company via Cumberland Farms that services your properties? They should be local because we don't have our own private landscapers. So as I can tell you from other municipalities, we've always hired local people. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I mean, there, I've been talking about some conditions. So if there are no other questions and I don't see anybody from the public who wants to ask. So at this point, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I move that we close the public hearing for the um, Cumberland Farms proposal. I second that, Kathy Wittroba. That's Rachel Lane. 
All right, um, a vote. Yes. Kathy Wittroba? Yes. Yeah. Andrea Leibson, yes. Emily Gaylord, yes. Denise Mason, yes. Rachel Blaine, yes. Okay, the public hearing is And Kathy Sylvester. God, I'm sorry, <laughs> Kathy. That's what happens when you're on the line. I totally forget. But I see people are reminding me. Thank you. And you're all set, Kathy. Yes, okay. Thumbs up. Okay. So the, the hearing is officially closed. So now, um, so deliberation. Um, we do have some conditions. Yeah. All right. So Dawn, I'm not sure whether you have, and Amy, could you, well, you know what, yeah. if, if you can put the conditions, share them so others can see. Yeah. Okay, Great. so hold on one sec, let me okay. share my screen. There. Okay. And Amy, you'll be sharing these conditions with. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. And do you want me to read all of these or can you read these? I mean, we have general conditions and, uh, you know, if I'm not going to read all of them because you'll get totally bored listening to me. But the app, okay, the applicant is responsible for obtaining permits, approvals, licenses from other town departments and regulatory bodies as, as appropriate, okay? Sort of basic. Um, the appointed agent for the planning board shall be the building commissioner, okay? And the usual, if anyone wants to appeal, they've got uh, 20 days from the date. Following the 20 day date, appeal period, uh, the special permit decision from the town clerk's office shall be recorded at the Fra Franklin County Registry of Deeds. Um, the, approval, the approval shall lapse if construction has not begun within one year, okay? Um, and you will receive all of these federal and local permits. Pre-construction conditions, the applicant, you need a certificate of completion from the stormwater authority that's us, <laughs> as, as the stormwater permit decision on March 8th, 2018, item two before commencing construction, because that was never closed. The applicant okay. shall, excuse me, okay. The okay. applicant shall notify the building commissioner in writing at least 48 hours prior to beginning construction. And <clears throat> you, should, you shall complete the project in accordance with the, the approved project plans, which are incorporated here and by reference. Um, let's see. And the planning board's appointed agent bill inspector would be, he's authorized to approve minor modifications of the approved plans. If he determines that a proposed modification warrants additional review, he'll instruct the applicant to present the modification to the planning board. So hopefully if there are no modifications, you won't have to come back. Um, and then we'll have a new application of revision. And violation of any condition or failure to comply will um, subject to zone enforcement action in accordance with remedies set forth in MGL uh, Chapter 40A. So you would bear the cost of any subsequent peer review triggered by any changes as noted above, okay? And of course, the hours of construction are limited Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Finally, project completion. Certificate of approval from the building commissioner shall not be applied for or issued until all work as approved and the approved plans is completed. The project shall not be considered complete until project engineer has submitted a written statement with his her seal stamp affixed certifying that all work has been done in accordance with the approved plans and conditions of the site plan review amendment and that all systems are functioning as designed and building inspector agrees that the project has been, been completed in accordance with the site plan amendment, including conditions. I know that was a mouthful, <laughs> but great. Amy will furnish all of these to you. And I, I think we already have that understanding. I think you said that to Seems. begin with. So I think we're all in agreement. Mm -hmm. All right, terrific. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. So if there's nothing else, then um, I think we we voted to Take close the meeting. I think we'll vote to either approve or not approve. Yes. Vote to approve this with the conditions set forth. So this is Rachel Blaine. I um, move that we approve the 
and special, sorry, site plan review um, with the 11 general conditions put forward um, for the Cumberland Farms project to change their parking arrangement from six to eight parking spaces. Do I hear a second? Emily Gaylord, second. All right. And vote. Kathy Wittrava. Kathy Wittrava, yes. Andrew Leibson. Andrew Leibson, yes. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, yes. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. And Kathy, and Kathy Sylvester. <laughs> Kathy Sylvester, yes. Thank you, Kathy. All right. So I, I think we're all set. And um, we hope we have continued Good communication and you know with the um conscom and with the planning board and wish you luck and i really like the idea of the camera yeah. i do too i'm pushing hard so great hopefully, idea. hopefully christmas will come early okay terrific okay right, thank so you much. so much thank you. Thank okay bye-bye bye all right so let's see on to with our next webinar. yeah Okay, on to our next, and that would be the ANR Waitley Road, and that's a revision of the previously approved ANR. <clears throat> I did speak with Amy. Bob is not on tonight because he felt that it was it's pretty straightforward. I think it was just adding a small piece to the back of the parcel. Is that correct? Is this Mr. Rodowitz? Yes. Uh, good evening. Yes, um, we're expanding the um, in lieu of in lieu of what we decided to do back in September. Where we where we just did the frontage, frontage by by whatever the the amount is by the by the required back part, we decided to include in that parcel everything go, that goes south to the abutters land in the back. We realized that um, someday my brother next door, James Rakevitz, may want to go all the way back to the back lot sometime in the future, five years, ten years from now. And if we didn't if we didn't include that this additional parcel with with with, with 89 Waitley Road, we um we 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 realized that that parcel would be landlocked. So we felt it was um worth doing now and not deal with easements or or whatever complications would, would happen in the future. Okay. Sounds like a good decision. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not a developer, so we we um we made our mistakes and and we're here to correct them in this in this revised parcel. Yeah. Well, no, that's fine. I mean, it's better to do it now than, you know, as you said 5 years from now have an issue with that. Exactly. All right. Um so I think that's pretty straightforward. I don't know does, it, does anyone have any questions? No. All right. Um we need to move so, to accept it. Yeah. Endorse. Endorse it. Endorse it. Mm -hmm. so Emily Gaylord moved to endorse the ANR for 89 Wheatley Road. Do I hear a second? Andrew Liebson, second. All right. I'll put it to a vote. Kathy Wittrobe. Kathy Wittrobe, yes. Andrew Liebson. Andrew Liebson, yes. Emily, Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, yes. Rachel Blaine. Yes. Kathy Sylvester. Yes. And Denise Mason, yes. I think we're all set. We're going to sign this, so it'll be here. And then Amy can do what you need to do, Amy. Amy does. Okay. Yep. I'll, be, I'll be there tomorrow morning to pick it up. Thank you very much. Sounds all. great. Thank you. Good luck. You. <laughs> okay. Well, that was pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. So any other business not reasonably anticipated? No, no. A resounding <laughs> say quiet nothing. meeting. This okay, good. so uh, reports, seminars. I know I, I do have something to report. Kathy, do you have anything to report from anything? Not that I can think of. Okay. Um, senior Housing Committee continues to meet every week and uh, we're moving forward. But there's um we're still working on the plans, et cetera. So Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Andrea? Open space, the open space committee met recently, had a big long discussion about whether or not we should be continuing the thought of permanently protecting several pieces of several parcels of land which the town of Deerfield owns, and we decided it was worth 
doing that. There are expenses involved and we are pursuing funding to get those things done. Great, thank you. No, that's really important. Especially with the help of the Franklin Land Trust. Land Trust. That needs to, be, that needs yes. to be said there. They're very, very helpful. We did meet with a gentleman from the Department of Conservation and Recreation, mm -hmm. ECR, and he was very interested in um, in this for us. He's new to DCR in this area, but he is not new to the area in general, and he was very excited about the work um, we are trying to do to protect Pocomtuck. Mm -hmm. great. That's great. Yeah. That is good. Emily, anything? No? Okay. Okay. I do have a few things. And um, both Rachel and I were able to, and I think everyone was invited. I, I think that you just weren't able to attend. Okay. So Rachel and I were able to attend the CPTC, which is Citizen Planner Training Collaborative. And we both went to the roles and responsibilities of planning boards and ZBAs and special permits and variances. I didn't find the special permits and variances as, you know. Well, it was a nuts and bolts. Yeah, And right. I would definitely yeah. recommend it. it My was comment good. on the way out was, I did something like this early on and it was like ever so much wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and um, so after a few, that was too early. Like it was too early in my tenure. So yeah. it all sounded like right. figures and very right. scary. And this time it was like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, the guy was the the our was first presenter. Excellent. Really, really was uh, very. He was a former U Mass professor. Mm -hmm. I forget in the planning department or something, but he was really good. Unfortunately, we spent so much time introductions to begin <laughs> with, which drive drove drove me insane. There were like fifty people in the room. <laughs> But yeah, what's really interesting is that Ann Gobi, who is our um, rural development person for the state, she was there and she she really was interested in hearing what others had to say. And I That's guess right. um, just to summarize, it was about housing, housing, climate change, housing. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody in the, was in agreement, you know, with with some of the same issues. Oh, I learned one thing. Don't make any jokes during planning board meetings. Oh, right, I know. That was, seriously, that was a piece of advice. I was like, Ooh. It's like guilty, but yeah. anyway, so. Both Denise and I created well, that. Well, that, 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 that was a big trouble. That was a suggestion, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but, can I just mention, uh, before we move on, that they also offer, um, the CPTV also offers um, webinar classes and I can send you guys the, because yeah, I think they're very helpful. Uh, the town, the planning board with Denise's um, approval will yeah, definitely cover your, your um, the admission fee. And I plan on taking some of them because I find it helpful in okay. helping you. So. No, that would be great, Amy. And the other thing that I think, Amy, you said that you would join the Citizens Planner group. Yes. And get access to this um, a handbook, which did sound also like really, oh, really yes. good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, do this first, okay. then this. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. You know, um, yeah. a lot of really good right. hard, hard tack tips. And they're supposed to send us, I think, all the PowerPoints too, but you know, we, I haven't received them as of today, but that was just Saturday. So when we do, we can also share that. All right. I just want to move on to a few other things. Um, just want to let you know anybody who actually watches this Zoom meeting, which I do occasionally watch other Zoom meetings, but I think what's really important is that understand what CCI does, and that's Connecting Community Initiative. And we meet on a regular basis, not the same time or you know day of every, every every month, but um, what it does is it gives an overview of everything that's happening in the town, a lot of the important issues that are happening. For instance, um, hopefully everyone knows that the library is going to ha have a temporary move to the old church, the 1821 building, and that'll happen in February. And that um, I think the library trustees are going to be asking the legislature for more money, which we need because of you know COVID and everything skyrocketing. So that's going on. CPC, um, <clears throat> just to let you know that typically we've gotten 100% match, but now we're only getting 60% match in other towns. But since we are a 3% community, 
we are getting 60% whereas other towns, if they're not at 3%, you're only getting 40%. Mm -hmm. So that's so much better. Yeah. So, but just to let everyone know that. And then um, there's a heat grant and that is for the town campus. Once again, it's for geothermal and it's to drill a test well. I mean, it's pretty involved process. It's like 500 feet deep and it's gotta be, you know, this certain structure. But um, Tim Hilch, I, I say this very loosely, Tim Hilch and I, worked on that and it's mostly Tim. I mean, I helped with a little bit, but he was really did the lion's share of the work. So we'll find that out in January. So that'll be hopefully moving forward. And that's for 50,000 grant. And they asked for a ridiculous amount of information for that small amount of money. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, the plant, the, um, the select board was talking about how they are really working hard on on trying to get money from the legislature for all the all the flooding issues that we had in all the roads. And I know people, I see this online, but people people saying, well, we're not doing anything on River Road. And that's that's really not true. I mean, we've got engineers out there looking at it and you know, trying to figure out the best way to fix it. And we want the state to give us money to fix that. Mm -hmm. So, and just as a reminder, there is there's a vote tomorrow, and that's to vote the five million dollars to pass that that we did at the special town meeting. So I encourage everyone to get out and vote for that. And for anyone who doesn't know, you can you can see everything that we do on CCI. You can see all our minutes and that's DeerfieldCCI.org or just let me know, I'd be happy to talk to you. So that's my report. And if there is nothing else, I would just I'm going to give a little plug to for CCI because in, in that long session of <laughs> introductions it was actually very informative and i think ann Gobi was the one that wanted that yes because um yeah. people really uh like the whole shelburne falls oh the whole shelburne falls uh planning board was there all of them they have five and um so that was impressive and um and as she said as denise said the housing 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 but I, I think that everybody kept also pitching back to communication and working mm -hmm. together and the CCI is a great uh, vehicle in our town for connecting people. Yeah. And so I, I, there were a lot of times when you kind of wanted to grab tips and, and actually Kathy, um, the woman who was spearheaded the ADU um, in Buckland, uh, um, cause we kind of stole, not stole, but we got some motivation and some momentum from them. And uh, that I felt a little bit like sharing out in that mm -hmm. setting was a good idea yeah. just because here's a bunch of uh, citizen planners, all the people there are volunteers and yeah. devoted to their communities and putting in Definitely. that time. And, but learning on the job, as so many people are. I think it would have been nice to add, you know, add maybe another session where people could have actually gotten together and talked to each yeah. other. I think that would have been really, really That's valuable. It. But another thing I did bring, we do have CCI postcards, and I did hand one to Ann Gobi and talk to her and talk to her about a grant that we've applied for twice and did not get. I <laughs> told her I was very unhappy about that. But she's supposed to send me some information. I think she's going to be somehow affiliated with that now, the community one stop. Right. So she said, you know, hopefully, you know, that'll help in some way at some point. <laughs> but anyway, do um, if there's no other business, do I hear? I would say it's a good time to move to adjourn. How about anybody else? Oh, I'll second that. Yeah, yeah. that's Rachel and Emily. All in favor? I'm sorry, who seconded? Uh, Emily did. Thank you. Okay, Kathy Sylvester. Happy Sylvester, yes. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, yes. Andrea Reeves, yes. Kathy Wachobe, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. So meeting is adjourned.